Where the fuck have you been? My apologies. What happened? Strippers. Well, there's two things. The main thing, where's my light? And yeah, Ron, we are recording, just so you know. Just generally not prepared. So you know when you go away, you can hear me good, eh? Yeah, yes. you're good. You know when you go away, it throws off your morning shit a little bit? Uh-oh, yeah. Oh, boy. And I was like, fuck, I got to get this over with before the show. And it was like two minutes before the show, and I thought, I got time. This is the moment. Seize the moment. Yeah. You didn't have much other choice, you know? No, I was like, hey, I'll just go do this real quick. I might be a minute or two late. And then uh, I wound up being in there for a while. It was like seven minutes. And then while I was taking a dump, I realized I didn't have my phone with me. So I couldn't text oh. you guys to tell you, like, I was just literally stuck on the toilet in, like, another world separate from everyone else. <laughs> Disconnected. No there communication. He was. I might as Locked well have been out. floating in space. <laughs> You might as well have been in a coma for 14 minutes longer right? than expected. Yeah. But, 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 you know, that amount of feeling alone really makes you reflect on things, you know? <laughs> He's decided he like, no longer wants to do the show. <laughs> I, I think it's probably similar to, like, standing on top of a mountain by yourself, right? Yeah, it's because basically the same alone. thing. It's basically yeah, the same thing. Same thing. You know? You know, you have Climbing lots of time to reflect. Growing a tail, totally the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hey, the best news is very, very great welcome home shit. Like back to normal. You know how when you're away on the road, they're just never the same. You're trying to get your fiber in and you kind of skip some veggies. Probably not as much I'm, water you know, as usual. Not as much, know. but you know, whatever. Yeah, we were really, you know, it's a little hectic. And I, I, I ate completely randomly. Like I ate pretty clean, but I had junk and I didn't need any veggies and like stuff like that. So you get home and you get back on, you know, the bedtime shake with all the fiber in it. And then you wake up and bam, we are fresh reset. It's like I never left. There you go. It's good to have you back there, Shitter. Where, where yeah. were you? Where were you guys? And, and, and you guys also, too, you left us a cliffhanger last week. Uh, you said there's going to be another, a new announcement for Mutant, a new Ashley. Oh, people were yes. surprised it wasn't me, you know. Like they I know, always I know, surprised I know. it wasn't you. <laughs> Shocked. So yeah, Sean Clarita has joined the team. That's so. So cool. yeah, just a quick reminder: um, like, share, mm -hmm. subscribe, comment, ring the bell. Ooh. And this is episode one sixty one of it's yes. just bodybuilding. Yes, that's insane. Okay, we got all that shit out of the way. Sean Clarita is a mutant now. He was and, a mutant before. Uh, but he's an he was a mutant before. Mutant. So yeah. I, I was trying to get Sean Clarita on the team when I worked there. And this was before he'd won the 212. Well I just before. thought he was, sorry? Well before. Well before, yeah. And I was trying to get him on just because like, I thought height to weight or height to strength ratio, you know, his weight to strength ratio is probably the strongest pro on the planet in some lifts, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought it would, he just made sense to be a mutant. I was like, and plus I like Sean Clarita. He's a great guy. Like I always got along really well with him. He's and he's hardcore bodybuilder. Like that's, that's that's all he does. Like he's a bodybuilder. He's a professional bodybuilder. You know, I've I've known pros that were you know had all this other stuff they like to do, or you know they were maybe a little loose with their diet, or you know what I mean, stuff like that. Not Clarita. Yeah, he is like he's a robot. That's why he's a champion. So he 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 belongs on the team. He fit right in, and he brought uh, a great dimension to the. Uh, the, the week that we just had, we just spent uh, five days in Vegas um, shooting mutant content. We call it the Mutant Mansion, and we've done a few of them. They're like content gathering trips, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, we did one in L.A. with I remember the first one we did in L.A. in 2013 with Rich, mm -hmm. and then we did one in Denver in 2014, um, and Rich was on that one as well, and then... Um, and then we did one in Vancouver when I tore my quad. Yes. 2016. Yes. So this is a f fun trip. We got a lot of content. You know, Dusty and I trained together for video and, f and photo, you know, you know, website content and stuff. And uh, they put the giant with Clarita for a workout. They had a workout together. So it it's probably pretty cool video, you know. 
And, um, you know, we had Andrea uh, Shaw there, you know, two-time Miss Olympia. Hell yeah. Shooting for Mutant with Shelby, our uh, Canadian physique athlete. So she's awesome. And they were great together. So uh, check them all out on Instagram, you know. And uh, yes. plus me and Dusty, the old fucks. You know? <laughs> We're just trying to see how long we can hang on for dear life. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a great trip. We had a lot of fun. That's cool. So, My legs are um, sore, Ron. My legs are sore from that workout. Yeah, you know, we did like a really low volume leg day. Huh. Because like on those trips, you know, we normally do a heavy set and then a back off set. Like typically that's how I've always kind of trained. Yep. Even before we use those terms, we used to just say two work sets, but yeah. that's how Dorian did it. So that's how we did it. Um, but when I shoot for mutant, I typically only do one working set. Yep. And um, it's because the guys shooting get tired too. And they don't need two working sets because the way the video gets edited, they only show one working set anyways. And, you know, it's all kind of montage you know, we try to move at faster pace. You know, I think the old style video where you just like show the, we used to show like the whole set, like from one, one angle. Yeah. Yep. The, the right. Mitsuro but, style. Like whole, yeah. The Mitsuro you know, style, yeah. you know, but, yeah. but you know, over the years, nothing. Sure, yeah. <laughs> everything's evolved and, you know, you, you want it to, you know, he's cut up more. And so, yeah, they only need one work set. Give them, give them all you got, give them a really, really great set and then move on. You know, it's, it's a long day for everybody. They're, they've shot three workouts by the time they shoot me and Dusty doing legs. They've been on their mm -hmm. feet since 7 a.m. They've been standing in the kitchen shooting shake videos. And, like, those guys have a lot a lot to do, too, you know? Yeah. So um, I used to be a professional photographer, so I can tell you, it's it's a lot of work by the end of the day. You're just yeah. as tired as the models. And, and, the you know, models, you don't think about them getting tired, but they get tired, too. And I can only imagine yeah, yeah. you guys lifting. You know, yeah, like they're real workouts, right? You know, they're yeah. all real workouts. So, um, you know, we uh, we had some fun though. Did like a totally, it's like something I don't normally do. We did, Dusty wanted to do 20 reps on a leg press, which I failed to do on my work set. I didn't even really? get to 20. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we did a heavy set of pendulum, like a real good, like double forced rep pendulum set. Nice. Yep. And then we did uh, a single leg set, you know, that arsenal leg press with the, the, the divider. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. So we did like single legs on that for 30 to 50. Oh, shit. That was totally you, wasn't it, Dusty? That was like your. Yeah. Yeah. Brain yeah. child. <clears throat> and uh, so I did a set of 30 reps on there. Nice. Looking back, I could have done more, but you know, the first time you do something, you're like, eh, this feels weird. Yeah. If I would have done another set, I probably could have gone up a plate. Like, yeah. On a second had, set. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you do that weird step up and you actually get stronger because you just haven't done an exercise for so long. So you have like that first work set almost as like your, I don't know. Your, we also forget because we use adaptive you, set. Usually when I do a single leg, it's still a normal platform. Yeah. And so, that had that. Yeah. Yeah. You were truly only doing five plates. You know, because we had 10 on the machine, but it's mm -hmm. one one side mm -hmm. was locked in. So that was good. I could have probably left after leg press, which was the first <laughs> thing we did. Because, yeah. yeah, like pushing through. And I had one of those moments where I was like, I'll just keep going and see when I can stop. And I got like 40 reps. And I, I, had, I had to literally, we went straight over to the pendulum to do those. And I almost had to feel like I was pulling myself down with a plate on a side. Like gravity was not enough for my legs to like huh. bend was so at that point. <laughs> so it was brutal. And then Ron gets the idea to do see the leg curl. I'm blaming him even though I said it. Um, because they fucking hurt. That that which one which machine, which so company made used, that leg curl? We used the old Cybex at we were training at the Dragon's Lair all week yep. so it's flex's gym right so flex thank you flex lewis and the whole team at the dragon's lair for welcoming the mutant uh crew and letting us just come and go and leave our shit everywhere and fucking put our camera stand in the corner and you know um and and all the members were just great like you know they were all like you know smiling at us and head nodding and saying hi and That's several cool. guys coming up and saying they watch the show nice um True. So that was pretty cool. And people asking for pictures and 
you know, people following us on Instagram and looking at their profile and they're like from the dragon's lair, you know, like a whole bunch of that stuff. So, um, yeah, it was really cool. And, uh, a uh, great place to shoot because the lighting's great. Like you look really good in there, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a spray tan bef when I got there to Vegas. I went, I went in the morning and got a spray tan before day one showed up at the gym with a fresh sp spray tan on, nice. you know, like I just been to Mexico. You know? <laughs> good but, vacation. Um, Do you guys like, yeah. okay, no, I know you guys have both done a lot of different shoots, you know, through your careers. Um, do you do anything, either of you or both of you, do you do anything different? Obviously, Ron got a spray tan before the whole thing started. Do you do anything different going into one of these workouts compared to just your average workout that you do every week? I, 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 well, I used to, you know, like, I mean, years ago, if, uh, if they said, hey, you know, we're going to do a shoot, I might diet a little bit and you know, throw some Winnie tabs in or something. You know what I mean? And like, just, you know, cause that was always like a great, that was, I always say that's one of my favorite contest compounds. Right. So I would throw like some Winnie tabs in for like three weeks yeah. and it would like literally make a difference. Like I'd be like way more. And, um, but I don't do any of that now. I just do everything normal and, and I'm always in this shape. This is the shape I'm always in. In fact, right now I'm actually a little bit fatter than I was. Cause I was like, you know, pretty loose on my diet the last month, but, um, yeah, I didn't do anything different other than get a tan, you know, same like my, pre workouts, I, all that stuff. Same. Yeah. Just half a scoop of all in, which is like the, the main pre workout we have with all the citrulline in it and stuff. I do like two thirds of a scoop, I guess. Nice. And I just make sure I uh, put salt in my shaker, you know, real, you know, really make sure you're hydrated for, for these workouts. Um, another thing too, is your food's kind of off while well, mine, um, cause you know, I don't give as much of a fuck. So my food's kind of off, but right. I find that my food being off doesn't affect me in the gym at all. If my hydration's good, mm. true, you know, cause you're, it take, would take a while to deplete and it's not like I'm getting depleted. I'm probably eating a surplus of calories. So I don't have to worry about my food at all. I just have to make sure I'm hydrated. You know, because sometimes you're shooting at like nine in the morning too, and I'm not used to that. So I got to make sure when I get up, I'm like, okay, get a liter in, and then I can drink my th fucking three cups of coffee. <laughs> Minimum. What What about you, Dusty? Do you do anything different before a photo shoot or a video shoot? I don't. The only thing is, is um, <clears throat> you you don't have the luxury of your typical drive to the gym. So yeah, and when you get to the gym. It's very chatty and hanging outy and you know relaxed. So you kind of have to like like when we went in for legs because I wanted to have a good one. Because um, remember, I I had missed the week before legs and a few days of training because I got sick after Phoenix. So um, I didn't try and train in seven days when we got to town. Um, so I literally told Ron like we walked in, we sat down, and kind of everyone's chatting. And I just looked at him like, all right, I got to get ready for this. And I went off and just kind of put headset in so that even the photographers were coming up and like filming, thinking it was time to start. Like there'd be some banter. I didn't say anything. Yeah. And they're professionals. So they figured it out real quickly and yeah. gave it the space. But I probably took 10 minutes on leg day to just get my mind going so I could put on a, you know, a good workout and a good show. So it was, but it was fine after that. It's just, it's very different to be so lax for me going into a workout because you're not just relaxed, but you're talking about what are we doing tonight and what got done this morning and what do we need to do? And after the, after you're done shoot, like we don't like get done training, then go eat a meal and lay down or whatever. It's like, okay, change your sh shirt. You're going to film for uh, the products. Now or you're going to film for the new clothing. Now or you are going to shoot stills for the clothing. Now, like, it's it's once we get to the gym, we're there for about six hours. Ah, uh, okay. You know, yeah. <clears throat> so you're kind of that kind of deal is there the whole time. But other than that, as far as like leading in, I guess the thing I did different this time is I didn't train or eat for about a week. I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not well, how no, I would you, do it uh, on purpose. You uh, you definitely. So I, there's two things about the leg workout we shot. The first thing is. I wish I would have done another forced rep or two on the leg press. I'm pissed right. off. Hmm. I did two forced reps and I thought you really helped on that last forced rep. 
Right. That's why that's why I racked it. And then I think you said right after you're like, Oh, I barely touched it. And I remember right. being like, mm. fuck. <laughs> You know, I was just pissed because I wanted to put on a really good workout for the video. Yeah. So on the pendulum, I did a forced rep where I think you had to lift pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. That was, um, uh, if you go for another one, I have to get this off. <laughs> yeah. And I made it worse by like sitting down on it. Like I went real slow down and I was like, okay, I'm going to give everything I have on this one because I feel like I didn't entertain enough on that first set, you know? So I really took that negative down like, six second negative and made dusty lift like half of it off of me <laughs> and i thought okay there's nothing more i can give you you know this is Wrapped all it. i can give yeah. yeah it was good it was really good and i thought the whole the whole weekend's that way plus the other thing scott is i am a creature of habit i can train any time but i do like it to be a consistent time we yeah. trained at nine in the morning we trained at one in the afternoon we trained at four uh, after the afternoon so it's like each day is different and yeah we trained at three totally different times yeah. like the three separate slots that we had we trained in each slot <laughs> yeah so it was it was a bit and then also the um you know it's different because you're at the house you're hanging out with people so you're not really i mean we all took a little bit of time to like go get a get a rest get a little napping or something because the rest of them are actually all in contest prep it's only ron and i who could do whatever um Everyone yeah, else they're all, in the house they're all kind of dieting. Like they're all in some stage of dieting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I, I just try not to complain about a single thing. There's nothing to complain about. They're the ones that were dieting. You know, did Jamie's they, cooking fish. Oh, like, it's oh so did they shoot video like all around the house too? Like, uh, like yeah, re like Real World. Do you remember that show, Real World? The on yeah, MTV, they got they like got that some stuff? of that. That's I, cool. You know, they, they they shot a lot of stuff, you know, cameras were rolling. They might be shooting shake recipes or something, but cameras were rolling. And then like in between takes, people are walking through the kitchen, like talking and grabbing shit out of the fridge. And like they're, they're, who knows what's on the, the cards? Like, I don't know what's on those cards. They <laughs> yeah. There's a bit of chaos that goes on at the same time. And you yeah. just run with it. Because like usually if you were doing a, like a cooking video in your house, you would like shut everyone up. It's like quiet on the set, you know? Yeah. So they're they're doing like a day in the life with Drea and she's in the kitchen like talking through a recipe and then we're in the kitchen talking. Okay. Like right behind her. So it's like it, it's probably a bit of a clusterfuck, but I thought it was acceptable because it wasn't a cooking video, it was a day in the life video. And yeah. that was the, the day in the life. The recipe. You know, yeah. well, of, at that time it's like no, this is a shit show. Like there's very <laughs> few moments in that house. I mean, there were what we had six athletes and four uh, staff, right? Um, oh yeah, no, so, yeah, oh, was, sorry, four staff, three photographers. Wow, <laughs> yeah. all in the same house. It was like a ten yeah, bedroom, eight bedroom thir house. Thirteen of us, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was. It was. It was big. You know, George's wife was there, so you know they could share a bedroom, obviously. So that was that was good, but. But yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was hectic in the house, but, and it, it was cool too. Cause, uh, we get there and it's this crazy lot. Like it's the entire cul-de-sac is one lot. Huh? The whole thing all the way around. It's a, it's a yep. big keyhole cul-de-sac. It's all one giant lot. There's a golf green and a, and a golf tee on the one side. And then on the Maybe other side, there's green if you wanted to. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And then on the other side, there's essentially what they did was there's two houses and they joined them. Huh. Yeah. And then they made the one garage like a big living room. Holy crap. And and they kept the other garage. Um, or did they keep the other garage? Yeah, the other garage is there on the yeah. right side. The other garage We're, is there, but we just didn't have access to it. Two full kitchens. <laughs> two full, what, a big full kitchen at each end because it's essentially two houses, right? Yep. Wow. And then on the hallway that they joined them with, they built giant bedrooms off of with the ensuite bathrooms. So there's like so many bathrooms in it. I don't know how many we had, eight bathrooms or something. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty cool. You know, it went really well. We all had space. We all had our own room. We all had, you know. Our own weed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we all had our own weed. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't supply that, if anyone's wondering. We had to get that out yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that does not come from not come with the yeah, Airbnb. <laughs> no. But yeah, you know, it was fun. And um you know, I haven't stayed in a lot of Airbnbs, you know. Yeah. I haven't done a lot of that. So 
um, and I'm interested in that business. Me too. You know, like I'm looking to do that. I'm Me like too. trying to think, like, how can I, you know, what's a good move? You know, it's it's easy to get into, but you don't just want to just jump in. You want to like, you know, you want to step in when it's a good time for you. You know, I've probably so, stayed in twelve separate Airbnbs this year. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm kind of observing. I'm like looking around, like what is, what's the quality of this? You know, how is, mm -hmm. what's falling apart? What state is this place in? Like how are, you know, how does it look? You know, just trying to learn. Yeah, what do like they that have one set was, up for you? That one was actually not, um, it wasn't as nice as most of the ones I stay in. Uh, now, granted, mm -hmm. most Airbnbs I stay in aren't 10 bedrooms. Right. Um, That's so thing. I don't think like it, I don't think you really have to. Like I think if I owned that one, I wouldn't invest in the other things because when you're looking for that, you're looking for a place that can house 13 people. You're not yeah, saying that's the thing. is it the nicest one I've ever seen, you know? Like the awesome there like that was an awesome place for what we needed. It was yeah, awesome. Perfect. Yeah. But like some of the doorknobs were like loose and like you know, the shower thing was like broken and like the one knob was wiggly and there was water dripping out of the one tap and like, you know, like shit like that. Yeah. Yep. You know, the, my light switch didn't work, you know, like, so there's just like, you know, that's, that's how it works, I guess. Yeah. And then like you, when you go to the smaller ones, like what I would like to own people, it's for people like me that are like, okay, I'm going to go out of town. I don't care if I spend more money. I want the place to be awesome. Yeah. Right. Because I'm going to be in it a lot. Yeah. And, and then, and those ones are, I mean, and they're usually uh, remodels. So, like, I do a lot of, I really like uh, mid century modern uh, architecture. Me too. So, I look for those. And I always get, like, I got one when I was in Phoenix that was sick. Yeah. It was probably built in the 40s, 1940s or so, but completely remodeled brand new. Um, they even added on to the house. I knew where the add-on was because you could kind of tell because it it yeah. made the house much bigger. And then it had a <clears throat> brand new pool in the back, but they made the pool match the house. So it had like a, a an older feel to it, you know, but it was obviously you, you should two send years old. Me, you should send me what you're talking about. I, <clears throat> I can't I, I can't quite like Hold, see please. it in the head. Oh, okay. He's going to send me something. You. I got you right. I'm going to send it to Scott. All right. Oh, this is, happening. this is happening now. That way I'll throw it up on the screen. <clears throat> That's funny. I, I, uh, cause I wanted to ask Dusty about real estate stuff. Cause I know that, you know, you have a ton of experience with that stuff, Dusty. And I was thinking, I was like, Hey, uh, initially I was like, I wanted to call you at some point and be like, Hey, can I pick your brain? And then my second thought was, why don't I just ask you on the show? Cause every time we ever talk about business, People are like, oh, man, I love that. You guys should talk about that stuff more. I actually had a – oh, there it is now. Uh, I had a couple questions. Okay, I see what you got going on here. So this is the outside of the house. Let's see. Let's throw that up. It doesn't look like super special, honestly, from the outside. Oh, it no, because it's a, it's a, that's the thing. So it's a mid-century modern. It's an old-ass okay. house. Okay. But, but I'm the, sending – I sent you more pictures, so you're going to get – you got an open floor plan, it looks like, here on the inside. Oh, yeah. So, I love simple shit. Yeah, me too. And that looks simple and yeah. clean. Can you put That's up cool. a video, Scott, or no? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, send it over to me. Here's a, here's a shot. I just sent you, uh, I sent you the backyard. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, like that. It is very simple. So, and you can't really I, tell I like because the, of like the uh, pictures. I like yeah, the fan. So that's what and mid century the, the modern look is. It's just clean. Yeah. I feel like like MCM <laughs> is getting it real remind, popular now. It like reminds me of the sixties. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. The 60s that's exactly, and that's exactly what it is. It's supposed to be. Yeah cleaned up era you know this is a lot like um, my throw house that, that pool video up i sent you last all right it's still coming through your so. house is a mid-century year yeah, yeah. 1958 that's oh here it is let's see yeah all right see, let's I, see what I happens when i put this house. up here there we go oh that's nice man so they got like the you know, fire pit area, you got the pool. Yeah. Then again, 
lounge area. There's a little little green for putting down there. Oh, this is cool, man. Another seated area so that's covered. I, f- I, I feel like you yeah. could stick the cast of Mad Men on this yard. <laughs> and you wouldn't have to change anything. You could just film a scene. And it would work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? right? <laughs> or like an old Bond movie. Yeah, so that's, like that's what I like Bond about movie. that. Oh, an old Bond yeah. movie for sure. Yeah, like would I like that absolutely work. Yeah. Yeah, so I that's... St- I started yeah, that's doing the style the that I like to check out when we do those. And that... Uh-huh. Oh, are, are you getting a leg, oh. Dusty? What's the Dusty's math? getting a leg. Dusty's getting a leg. Yeah, I think it was oh, after okay. he sent the texts, it threw things oh, off. Oh, yeah, his, yeah. Okay. His connection wasn't super great today to begin with. And I know he okay. updated his internet. There he is. We'll add him on the right. Boom. Crystal. Oh, good. There we go. Down to the math. Okay, so I, I was talking to uh, Dave Callick yesterday. Uh, he's, mm-hmm. he's into real estate. And um, we we're I was doing the math, and, and I feel like I could buy a home somewhere. I would need to obviously take a loan out for part of that. Um, but this is what I would like to do is, is start an Airbnb with it in order to make that happen. I wouldn't just do that personally. Like I would want to first have like a corporation and then run that mm-hmm. through. Like, is that, is that what I would want to do? That's what I'm, I'm kind of asking. How would that work? Dusty? Well, it depends. I mean, it depends on what the rules are, where you are, number one, and where you're putting it because, there is a certain distance from your home that you can. Um, so what I'm saying is your business doesn't need to technically own the house. So you could buy it on your own. Um, and if it's far enough away, you could use it as a second home, which gives you a better interest rate. Okay. Um, you can only do that with two. And if it's right down the street, it doesn't work because they wouldn't be like, well, why do you have two houses that are 10 minutes from each other? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. That has to be an investment property. Um, as far as taxes and everything goes, you can use it as a, a second home is one option. And then depending on the rules there, uh, you're going to need the uh, corporation. I, I always do. I don't know what to do. If you're doing many of them, I'd have to ask Aceto what type of LLC S Corp it would have to be. Um, I use S Corps for my business, but it's different because those are self-employment. So I'm not quite sure what you would do as far as your business setup. You'd want to talk to your, um, you definitely need to talk to your tax guy about that because there are holes that people make mistakes on. Like a lot of people like us open up an LLC and they don't make it an S corp. And in the U S you don't dodge self-employment taxes if you do it that way. Mm, Okay. So you still, you're now self-employed and it's going to cost you $3,000 just because you didn't do that. Um, yeah. So I would look into that detail because I don't know the answer to that one. Um, because in the past, I only ever had two at a time. So I just bought a second house. Okay. It wasn't like really much of a thought process because I've never done rentals. I've only flipped. Okay. So gotcha. bought, flipped, you know, because that's a little different. That's easy. You buy the house on a deal. Um, you drop 50, 60 K into it. And then you sell it immediately, even though you're going to have obviously the capital gains, it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. you're making enough and you're going to do it often. Um, capital gains, you got to wait two years if you want to avoid that. Um, but as far as those, what's beautiful about it is you, you're you buying it through the business. As long as the business is paying for it every month, uh, paying the actual mortgage, it's fine. Okay. You know what I mean? It's it doesn't count towards you, and then obviously you're going to have the renters and stuff pay that business as well. Yeah. So it's it's really smooth. The only question mark for you is is what kind of house do you want to get? I think you know, not knowing how much money you've got to throw at it, we rent a lot of condos. Hmm. Okay. Because it's easy. Like typically, we don't need the whole thing. Um, you know, like if we're going somewhere, like when we go to Tennessee, we're in and out a lot. Like we're not going to go hang out by the pool because we've got friends and stuff there. So we're like bouncing all over town, but we still want a really cool place. So we'll get like a two or three bedroom condo and rent it. And that's super easy, you know, because now you're, you don't have to spend as much money up front because Hmm. you are going to, if in my opinion, this is just me, but we've never rented an Airbnb that wasn't just awesome when you walk in. 
Yeah, okay. Like, we want that, like, oh, shit, you know. And some of them are crazy. We, we had one that uh, it had a Pink Panther, like, that era theme. There was a giant Pink Panther wall in the house. Like, <laughs> painted. Funny. You know, but it was just cool. Like, they, had a, they all have a vibe to them, which I think is, is kind of awesome, you know. Yeah. And they base it yeah. a lot of times on where they are, too. <laughs> so, obviously, like, Tennessee, you get a lot of, like, music walls and style in there stuff like that so it's pretty cool but you know if you are you planning on doing it like up towards you i was thinking out of state um oh, i was perfect. thinking i was thinking maybe las vegas i was thinking maybe somewhere in tennessee and maybe a mm-hmm. couple other places too but the idea being that it could be something that we did like short term rentals at but at the mm-hmm. same time then we could we could also use it as well and i'm thinking because i you know i have some money saved in the bank and i could put that toward it versus just let that money sit in the bank it's not doing anything and mm-hmm. uh and then from there be able to eventually own that property as well as the house you know that we're living in and then i could it could possibly be a, a way to move from here you know into a new location or even be able to just like go visit sometimes like we want to go to vegas and we'll block that week off or that month off you know mm-hmm. something like that yeah yeah. I mean, obviously- yeah, there's lots of little things to know. Like, like I don't know how it is in the States, you know, um, but I know like here, you know, if you buy it yourself, it's 10% down. But if a corporation right. buys it, it's 20% down. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's, you need a bigger down payment if you want your corp to own it and then, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it just, so yeah, you just yeah. buy it yourself well, and then you just have them pay the corp and mm. Yeah, there, there's a lot with that too, though, because then if you don't put twenty percent down, obviously now there's mortgage insurance. So yeah. it's you know, the, the, and that goes for any house in the states. Anything less, you have, so you're spending money on nothing essentially. So if you have the money to pay down more, it's good to do. Yeah. Um, obviously, with that business is not a must, you know. But <clears throat> the only thing that you, that you have to look at too, because we're considering doing some in Nashville. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, us and then actually a couple friends are going to buy like a few of them but then you have a obviously you need a property management company because you're not Mm -hmm. there you know so to make sure it's run tight because that's one thing i think that is nice uh to me as a as as a renter i have found that every experience we've had when we've rented from an individual was better than when we rented from a giant corporation that owns 500 of them Mm. it's always different I mean, like, There's, like the personal touch is completely gone. If you need something, you're fucked. Hmm, um, right. <laughs> you know, like we've had issues where the only thing they could do was give us money back uh, because that issue was an issue in kiss ass. You yeah, know? Yeah. Whereas the other ones, I mean, we went to one in, in Nashville or in uh, Chattanooga. I mean, when we got there, there was a handwritten note from them, you know, to us, you know, Dusty and Nikki, glad you could stay. Blah, blah. And like they personally were checking in. I was, it was off That's the charts. Cool. That's cool. And I was cool. like, okay, if I was going to do this, even if I had a, you know, a management company, I'd be like, these are things I want because it's definitely that warm fuzzy. Like, oh, like we immediately said we will rent this unit again yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That stuff. Yeah. That's the me. thing that that business is evolving like crazy, and we're seeing, you know the the real entrepreneurial spirit like you know coming out in it like and you you stay at places like that and you see that people taking that approach and you know what i mean um so there's lots of different ways to play the game but you know it's interesting stuff Um, i think the intangibles is what makes you special though same with like i told ron this over the weekend like is is west coast iron the best gym minus the people minus the just the equipment that i've ever been to no but it's really really good and once you bring in those intangibles and not me every single member in there they know the owners they know the staff that like it is legit and i hate this term because it's overused but they're a part of the gym yeah like it's their yeah. gym if i open up down the road and my gym is let's just put a number 20% better equipment. I cannot take Ron's customers because he has the intangibles. Even if they come in, if I'm running it corporate style, they come in, they're like, that's a great gym. But after about a month or so, they're like, uh-huh. yeah, they go back. So I feel like those intangibles get me 
when I go anywhere, whether it's, you know, business like that. Like I said, those little details, I remember thinking like, oh, that's cool. That was the first moment walking in. I didn't read it yeah, because I don't <laughs> give a shit. But I literally was like, that's cool. You guys did that. And I know Nikki read it, yeah. but I'm not reading it. That's too many words. Don't want to deal with that. But <laughs> you, 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 you analyzed it like a cyborg. You just looked at it. You're like, I know what that is. Yeah, Does yes, it, the content nice. is irrelevant. <laughs> very nice. Personalized greeting note. <laughs> Personalized greeting note here. Yeah, check. Well done. Check. I think the, yeah. the coolest yeah. Airbnb Humans attempting to communicate. I, I've stayed in a few cool ones. I think the coolest one. This couple moved. They were a U.S. couple. They retired. They moved to Belize. They literally built a mansion. And when they realized that they weren't going to be able to continue building like all the cool stuff on it that they wanted. They built a small little house and used that as an Airbnb, literally on the side of a mountain overlooking the rainforest, overlooking the jungle. So this is like a little Airbnb, mm -hmm. a little little building, standalone building. Uh, it had to be maybe 600 square feet, just completely open floor plan, complete kitchen. Everything was very nice. Like they added all the really high end stuff inside of this mm -hmm. little building. So like tiny house, but you know, bigger than that. Anyway, uh, so they started renting that place out and creating income to continue building their home. Then they put another one next to it and another one. Now they had, <laughs> when I was there, they had three of them lined up and that beautiful landscaping, you know, the lady would bring flowers uh, or, or their help would pick flowers from their garden and put them like, you know, that personal touch yeah, in sure. this little place. And, and it was managed by them. They had their, their house workers and stuff that would clean and all of that. Like it was mm -hmm. a cool setup. And these people, like, I mean, they were they were living the dream. The guy took me, showed me his house, and he had his own gym, by the way, because there wasn't really good gyms down there. He had his own gym, and he was bringing equipment in from like Guatemala and stuff like that. His basement was hooked That's up. That's badass. It was it was sweet, man. Yeah, and it was reasonable too. You know, it was not that expensive to stay there, so it's cool. Yeah, I like the idea of the short term though, because I've been considering what we want to do next, and actually. Marrying someone for a year is a big commitment if they suck. Like if you <laughs> if you rent your house out long term, yeah, that's a that can be a nightmare. You know, I, I have done it once, um, and it was a mess because people are fucking slobs. That's what I worry you about. Know? You know, and it's like, and and I don't care even if it's your rental. And this is like, I don't have a romance with homes. I don't care. Like it's not like, oh, that's my house. Um, as far as buying and selling, but I don't like when people fuck up my shit. That does bother me. Yeah. You know, so it's like if I bought a place just for that and then you shit on my place, I want to beat you and can't. So that's a problem. Um, Airbnbs, it's quick. If you get an asshole, he's gone in four days. On to the next, you know, like the last one we went to, <laughs> we, we checked into one in Tennessee and we got there, and this was our first complaint. It was one of those ones I was telling you about where there was a management company. We got there, and the cleaner was still there cleaning. And it was very obvious she was nowhere near done. So I'm already irritated. And like now we're like an hour and a half into being there, and she's not ready. And we were supposed to be going to dinner that night, so I'm getting pissed. So we just said, screw it. We went in the house, started putting stuff away, and we're like, she can deal with us. And uh, one of the girls comes in the room, and we're like, what's this on this counter? And there was literally leftover cocaine from the oh. – <laughs> Before on the counter, I was like, "That's wasted." I mean, cocaine. But it was it was <laughs> like those are the kind of people you have in a place like that, though. That you got to be considering is that is what's renting a place in Nashville for four days, you know? Because it's become a bachelorette. Like it's it's actually outdone Vegas now as far as bachelor and bachelorette parties is is Nashville. Huh. So. Huh. Turner's wife created an entire company to help people throw their bachelorette parties, huh, okay. like a side gig, and she cranks yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you just hit her up, and you're like, "This is what we want," and they take care of everything, and you just show up. So it's wild. Okay. Well, now I'm excited to see what you do, Scott, because Scott's looking, Ron's looking. I'm over in a holding pattern. Sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what you should yeah, do we'll though speak. is uh, ask ask Chris Aceto questions, man. I mean, like my my knowledge is negative five, and could, like <laughs> I'll never know what Chris knows ever. Doesn't matter if I got into this hardcore for the rest of my life. The amount of information he has, because I called him even just on 
buying houses here. And the only thing he said about the house I just bought, he's like, don't sell it when you're done because I want to buy another one a couple of years later. He's like, rent it. Hmm. He's like, high end renting is awesome. It's easy. People that have 800 credit scores aren't fucking up your house. Yeah, exactly. And they're spending 4500 a month to live there and they're happy to do it. He's like, trust me, don't sell that house. And I'm like, done. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and I would have never I, guessed that there's a market for that. I just sent him a few questions, actually. Yeah. Just like this morning, I hit Chris up. So we'll see what he has to say. I thought he might respond in time for the show, but nothing yet. Yeah, and, and my main reason for all this is because, uh, you know, unlike a lot of people who probably listen to our programming, uh, being a full time nutrition coach and running a podcast, it doesn't have a 401k. So I need to think of something else. You know what I mean? Because one day I want to be able to retire. So I'm trying to just look for, you know, new avenues, new streams yes. to, to try to keep building that out so that one day I can uh, I can stop doing everything and just hang out. No, no, you're not allowed. We need you. Not that I ever would. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure that I'll always be like, you know. You can quit coaching people, but we need you for the podcast because we ain't going nowhere. No, no, no. <laughs> so what do we got? Yeah, we got some questions. We didn't do any YouTube questions yet. We have a like a, a bunch. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, all right, just dive right into them here. There were some fun ones. I don't know what I've got here. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. We asked, we got asked this a couple times. I forgot it last time. Did Ron ever compete in a pro show? If so, what show in place? Love the show, guys. Been following the show since I saw Dusty's post on Instagram of just a microphone saying him and Ron were doing this. <laughs> Day one. Nice. That's awesome. Yes, I did the Van Pro in 2015. It was one week after Nationals. So I turned pro and then I said to Chris, should I go, should I do this show? And Chris said, well, do you think you're ever going to do another one? And I said, I don't know. Cause I was like 39 already. And he said, well, if this might be the only one you do, you know? So I was like, okay. So I went one more week and did the van pro and I got seventh, which was last there was only seven guys but it was a crazy lineup and i just got my butt kicked but it was <laughs> fuad fuad john de La rosa right so like everyone knew like oh well one of them is gonna win so we were all just sitting around backstage like john meadows was there john meadows got last in the 212 okay i remember and, that like, that's just, right yeah I yeah remember both you just, guys. so me and john were both joking we're like we both just got our butts kicked you know what i mean <laughs> And we were both like pretty lean, you know, so we were like, ah, fuck, whatever. But yeah, I was I was a bit of a mess at that point. I was pretty beat up. I managed to get my pro card, but on a pro stage, you know, you could see that my one lat was a little bit high. So it really hurt me from from some shots. But yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. There was a ton of support there. Uh, Sean Ray emceed it. Oh, wow. And um, I remember he actually cracked a couple of, of good like comments about the crowd I had. So it was uh, it was good. <laughs> yeah. And there's actually a video on YouTube where I look pretty good. So, yeah, you can look for it. Nice. There you go. And then I blew my quad. Mm. Boom. I was there. All right. Mm -hmm. um, question for the next show. What is a movie y'all could watch anytime it's on? <laughs> Um, or have watched multiple times and still uh, it's just as good as the first time you watched it. I'm not going to go with my traditional here because I have a few that I've already mentioned in the show. Like I think Shawshank Redemption is always watchable. Um, but I want to go another route today and I'm going to say every single year we watch Elf. Huh. Because Elf is fantastic. There's something terrible about that movie that i can't get enough of so yes that's a, a yearly watch elf elf okay yeah. understandable being a christmas movie um i i try to think of other movies to say um but it always kind of eh, it's always kind of pulp fiction to me that was a good one. Well, I knew it. I was like, I know what he's saying. <laughs> I, I think one of the reasons why Pulp Fiction is 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 always that movie for me is because it's the movie you can come in on at any point and you're probably catching the start of a new scene. 
<laughs> and <laughs> since true. the scenes are out of order anyways, it doesn't matter. It's still fun. Like you're just hopping right in at this point, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, and you knew, you know how it goes and you know what you missed, but you're still, it's still, it's like a great album. You can start on any track. Yeah. You know, it's like that. And it's just such a, such, such a wild and well done, you know, movie. And it's all the dialogue that makes it crazy, you know. Is there a and more you quotable it, movie? Yeah, and, and right. when you watch it more and more and more, you 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 get the dialogue is is better and better because you're like, ah, oh, fucking, yeah, you know. There's a lot of just so many little references in there and and hilarious little bits, you know. So it's good shit. But yeah, how quotable is that, eh? You know, there's there's got to be at least like a. Um once a week something will happen that you could easily quote i mean you know i mean we had some tasty burgers this weekend we did yeah I yeah mean- <laughs> yeah i know it's a tasty burger it's a tasty burger yeah i, I think I it's still a say five dollar milkshake you know <laughs> i and 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 it's funny because i've been around people who've said oh i wonder if they have a five dollar milkshake right like looking mm-hmm. at the menu and and i always say I hope there's a shot of bourbon in there because that's his line. Right. And yep. they always get, they always get it. They always appreciate it. They're like, Oh yeah. You know, that's the best when you, when you, I hate when you drop a line and then they don't know because then I can't yeah. be their friends anymore. Just cause they don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've lost yeah. a lot of friends to a good line that they missed. <laughs> All right. I that's got another one here. Okay. Let's see. Question for the next episode. Uh, cycles for off season. Are most pros just running high test? Um, test plus DECA. There's always talk about prep cycles, uh, but not a ton of talk about off season. Curious as to what the pros and coaches would suggest for this, assuming training is on point and eating enough, of course. Thanks, gents. Hmm. Well, one of the one of the things that I think is a bad trend is that I think guys are using DHTs in the off season a lot more now, mm-hmm. and I think that that's a real problem because I think they're they're great contest drugs, and yes, they're probably great off season drugs too. But you got to kind of pick one because they're bad for your cholesterol, like real bad. I don't think people realize how how fucked up their cholesterol is getting by running DHTs all the time. Because we didn't see, like, I don't know, man. I've been looking at guys' blood work for, like, 25 years, you know? I don't remember seeing, like, everyone having horribly, like, really low HDL. Like, everyone's, like, 0.7, 0.7, 0.6, 0.8. Like, it just was never, it was never like that when we were all just running tests and stuff off season. I don't I just don't remember it. That's just how it seems to me. Again, not a scientific study. <laughs> so I just other, feel that's like that's not true. Yeah. I, I just feel like I see like it would make sense if guys are like 35, they've been cranking forever and their HDL's low. But when they're like 24 and their HDL's like 0. 0.7, I'm like, mm-hmm. what are you taking? And they're like, oh, Mastron and Anavar and Test. And I'm like, oh yeah, they're like all the time. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, it's or the tons of primo. I don't know. That's my opinion. That's, that's my new, opinion. It's a new popular thing right now. Is the, yeah. the, you know, like the primo or the mast, and and I, I get it to an extent, but I do think that here's the thing: is that everybody has gone, and I've talked about this before, anti anti estrogen. You know that we came to realize that you don't want to just hammer a Remedex year round at a high dose. Mm-hmm. It's not like a completely innocuous drug. It is a drug and it does have effects, but now it's like the way bodybuilding looks at it. It's like, we can't take that. It's terrible. Don't use it at all, but let's use this. Cause this is the answer, you know, for now that's, that's what mm-hmm. I think is happening. Right. Yeah. It's a back and forth. Right. Um, I think the reason there's not a lot of talk about it is because, and this is this I shouldn't say it across the board. The reason I don't talk about it a lot is because I don't find it as important in the off season um, what you take. It's it's you know within reason not not to go to say the old last week program of as long as it's a gram you're good to go. That's not what I mean for those that are about to twist it. But you know 
I'm like, what do you, I literally will ask clients, what do you have at your house right now? Oh, cool. You got tests and DECA? That'll do. Let's do that. Um, and the other reason is because I like to spend time. This is something I'm adamant about with clients and my clients will tell you if we're not seeing absolute gains when they're on TRT or nothing, then we don't go on a cycle. Hmm. Cause to me, the mistake is, is when you're taking a bunch of gear, they hide mistakes. Next thing you know, you're growing, but you're not growing because you're on a good plan. You're growing because you're taking a ton of drugs. If you're seeing a little bit of gains from your from your diet, o- OTC supplements, you know your rest and your training, then good news. When you add any basic cycle, you're good to go. You know, I also think that athletes need to be thinking about, especially like I remember when I was competing more often. Um, when you're hitting two shows back to back, like I would do the USA's and North Americans back to back. They were five weeks apart and I always liked long preps. So I'd be dieting for 20, 25 weeks, which means I was on drugs for 20 to 25 weeks. I didn't, I'd maybe do one cycle in the off season before starting that again, you know? So I think that's why some of us just don't talk as much as a, it's not that important. Um, there's not a magic. I've never said, and I have played with different cycles based on what people have, and I've never been like, oh, fuck. That's yeah, there's, the I've one. never stumbled upon the ma- Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> now I know, and that's why the, the answer has never changed. They're like, oh, I'll say like, oh, can you take DECA? And they're like, oh, I don't have any. I'm like, well, what do you have? And they're like, well, I got you know, MPP. I'm like, oh, in my head, I'm like, same thing. Not really, but it'll do. <laughs> same, you know. same, same drug. Yeah, different ester. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that's fine. You know, I don't get into the specifics of it. So easy. All what right, we got one from uh, Jeremy Jason. Oh boy, this is for Ron. Yes, <laughs> guitar, <laughs> guitar Thunderdome. Two men enter, <laughs> one man leaves. Ron Partlow versus Dorian Haywood. The loser dies. The winner dies. has the <laughs> the winner has dies. the honor. The honor of being strapped to the front of a post-apocalyptic monster truck to tra- to thrash on guitar while chasing down his enemies in the desert. Who's your pick? Actually, oh, it's, so, it's, 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 I think, a question for me and Dusty. Oh, right, you know right. What I mean? Well, yeah, have yeah. you seen Dorian Haywood play guitar? I haven't, no. seen, I haven't seen Ron play guitar either, though. I have. But what's, is Dorian, like, very good or something? I think he's a lot better than me. I think he like, plays <laughs> solos and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he can like play solos and shit. I can't. I can't play any lead shit. Mm. He does. I can I, riff. I have I, seen that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I can riff pretty well. I've played with guys that are in bands, and they're they've said that I have it. Like they're like, yeah, you have it. Like you, you could jam. Like you, you can jam with the band. You know that. You know, like I have a bunch of chords. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just. Uh, just my skill level but there's that musical like ability to like keep time and like play along and know when the beats are and stuff and they're like oh yeah okay that's there yeah, so right. you have you then like, you know i mean i can play entire i play the entire album of nevermind almost on guitar and bass right now so you know i have i have a bit of musical ability for sure um but i can't play any lead guitar that's just a, a level i haven't practiced enough like to get good at guitar, you can just play for decades. But mm-hmm. to get to be like a lead player, you have to like invest a lot of hours in a concentrated period of time so that your skill accumulates. Or else you just keep relearning the same basic shit over and over because you lose it like I do. Like I'll get a little <laughs> bit of lead ability and then I'll like not play guitar for three years. Mm. So I'll, you know what I mean? You just can't stack it up. Are you as good or better now than you've ever been? Or not no, yet. I'm no, I'm just I'm still working on that. 2007, okay. 2007 was when I could play like a lot of Tool songs mm-hmm. and a lot of Rage Against the Machine stuff, like almost all their stuff. I knew all their riffs and a bunch of old Metallica. I could play like Hetfield's part, like like all the rhythm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And um, it's just the speed with some of that was the problem. I'd have to have a really good day to be able to play that fast, but I can't do that anymore. So I'm trying to get my Nirvana back at least, which is like the easiest shit, but it's super fun to play. So, you know. Hi. It's a good question. I was wondering. I had a friend you know. named, who was also named Scott. And when we were like just out of high school, he took this job working at a bagel factory on midnights. 
and he spent every money, every penny he made on weed. He'd have this like just big old bag of weed all the time. And right. I'd come over his house, it'd be like noon, whatever. It was a midnight job. So I'd come over his house, it'd be like two o'clock in the afternoon. And he'd just be like waking up and he'd be like, hey, what's up, man? He'd roll up a joint as his eyes are still closed, spark it up. He'd be like in his boxer shorts and a bathrobe, bathrobe hanging open. I remember he had uh, he had his nipple pierced with like this, this upside down cross, right? <laughs> Take like five hits off of wow. a joint. Yeah. <laughs> Take like five hits off a joint, put it out, light up his Marlboro Red, and go get his uh, his his uh, flying V. Is that what you call it? The flying V guitar. The flying V, yeah, yeah. And I just uh, thought about the Mighty Ducks, but go ahead. He'd like take his hair all back and you know put it like back in a ponytail to get out of his face, cigarette all hanging out, and he'd turn on that Marshall stack, and he'd start out with like any Metallica song, and not only did he play it, but he had like the steps too, like that Hatfield would do. So it'd be like, ba boom And then he'd like take three steps forward and three steps back. ba boom Three steps forward and three steps back. And then just, yeah, yeah. Doo, 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 ba-da, ba-da, ba. Like, and he, that's the, how he woke up literally every Creeping day. death. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, you knew. <laughs> every day, man. That's how he woke up. Yeah. His his creeping death him. wake you up. Oh, so yeah, bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've met some. I've met some. Some. I've met some people that were unbelievable guitar players. Yeah. There's some guys out there that just, you know, they just never, they never really go for like the the you know they're like part time guys that like you know sell real estate and play in a cover band. Yeah. And they're like, fuck, dude, like you got like, like you know they can play anything. Like I remember this one dude I knew. He, I go, can you play any Van Halen? And he's like, yeah, he wants a Panama. And he starts playing Panama. But he plays it like perfectly. Like all the little harmonics and the little th- crazy little things that Eddie Van Halen throws in on that song. Because that song's like a, um, Panama and Hot for Teacher. Those two songs off 1984 are to me like everything about Eddie Van Halen that I loved guitar-wise. Like he puts all his tricks in those two songs. So... Um, he could play that stuff. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy just, but he sells houses, you know? <laughs> it's you know? That's amazing. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Ron was on fire with, with this one. That was, that was the, uh, the episode where you did the whole breakdown of the Texas show. Oh yeah. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. People loved that. Uh, question. Uh, build the ultimate Mr. Olympia from the current pros imagine them at their biggest leanest driest etc but also take into consideration who has the most beautiful physique best flow shape and representing bodybuilding physique wise (laughs) and also marketing wise social media brand ambassador promoting the sport like jay did Uh, excited to hear your answers huge fan all the best to you guys this is from luke e it's a big question luke it's a lot do you know what's crazy though? Like my knee jerk as I was reading, building the best Mr. Olympia of all time. Here's what's scary, and I, I believe this to be true. If I could literally piece together the best physique I could with as great as the competitors are now, they couldn't beat Ronnie. No. <laughs> He's still better. Like literally, you cannot. And that's not a shot at me. That's just how good he was. Like, I really don't think you could yeah. piece together a better bodybuilder than Ronnie Coleman from the stack that's but, currently there. Yeah. Like, 90, you know, 98 to 2003 was. How about 2001 like, when he just, just did the uh, Arnold and just fucking. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. He was, um, he was, he was the best. 2003, Ronnie, especially was the best was like the biggest you know that was as big <laughs> as it, it was as big as it could get without anything going wrong hmm. you know and uh because you know like we've talked about like the actual physical limitations of growing that much muscle on a body you know yeah. nerve and pin- nerve impingements discs in your back collapsing Oof. you know cartilage disappearing in your joints from the weight you know like there's there's physical limitations to the human body you know and um that was kind of like where ronnie I feel like 2003 was where, like, that was the last show, and then the body started to, like, you know. All right, so let's try to answer the question, though. All right, let's. so we'll start in the middle. Who's... 
Well, take Phil Heath. Let's just start with Phil Heath. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <we're, laughs> the just put best like just put 2012. Time. Yeah, but let's just take 2012 Phil Heath or whatever, 13 Phil Heath, whatever year, and just put him like as the base. So what do you do? You just got to widen okay. the shoulders a bit. There you I don't go. Know. Or you or you or you take O three Ronnie as the base. But he, no, no, but, like but he said bigger current. Calves. He said current. Uh, so we uh, can't current. have Phil. We mm. can't have Phil, and we can't have Ronnie. You gotta sorry. You gotta follow the rules. You're already cheating. How did I totally miss the current? I missed the current. I don't, I don't Didn't know. see it. It's right there. It was right there in okay. old black letters. All right. So who is our current base? Well, I guess. I mean, you'd have to kind of like. You have to allow for structural skeletal size differences if you're going to be moving body parts around. They yeah, all have to sure. scale. They all have to scale up and down. Yeah, of course. Oh, I don't know. I'm tempted to start with Hottie. <laughs> That's fine. I was I was going to say Hunter. So I'm, right, just right, because okay, his okay. physique can hold that. Mm, he's got he, the shoulders. He's got the waist. Yeah, you're right. He's got a bigger you know. frame. Okay. So okay. all right. So we're going to start with Hunter for argument's sake. Okay. Triceps. Ah, oh, this sucks. Like, can I what count, you even can I count Ruli as a as a current guy or no? He competed like a year I don't ago. Know. Do you bother yeah. switching anything? Hunter could just win. <laughs> yeah. But I just want to make him even freakier because I would love to take Ruli's triceps because I'd like to put them on anyone. The yeah, bonkers. you just want Ruli's triceps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so, let, I'm who, so who's I, who? If we're gonna just do this, but we have to pick like who has the perfect skeletal frame. I don't know, Brandon. Who's who's wider than that? If you're going for skeletal frame, if you're going for like that pleasing, well, I guess frame. I mean, we've got our current Mister Olympia has the biggest skeletal frame. Okay, I mean, does so you that, have to. Does that, you I guess that's start valid. There, you can start there. Yeah, we'll start with. We okay, have to start there. we'd always like change the waist. You know, is that possible? Yeah, yeah. You give him Hottie's waist. Is that just uh, how you do it? Just give him Hottie's waist, and then yeah, give him like. Uh, Give them, uh, I don't know, someone's calves. Who's got the craziest calves? <laughs> we we give them Hunter's calves. It's fine. Hunter's calves are Hunter's ridiculous. Calves. Yeah. So scale Hunter's right, we'll calves up for his frame and uh, scale yeah. Hottie's waist for his frame. And then, and then you know, I mean, Rami's back isn't the most detailed. No. It's, it's, it's the widest, but that's the frame. So whose back do you swap out? I don't know, Do but I think we got Dusty? Dusty's frozen. He's, he's there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's there. I'm just trying to think. Who's got the best back in the IFBB right now? I'm confused. Though. Like I'm getting really lost in the. Yeah, the yeah. You get really here, lost. You know? it's, it's see. Well, that's we've we've honored we've we've honored the question with this much time. It's a difficult question. Yes. We're, we've hit philosophical roadblocks. That's it. We just. I was have still to admit frozen here. for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Wild. I know it. Uh, yeah. I think this is a philosophical question that is going to be, you know, can't be answered. Can't we be just answered tried. right now. All right, we have you know. like a hundred more questions still. Oh, uh, good. Yes, yes. Um, we're about an hour in. Just throw it out there, guys. <laughs> oh shit! Look at this one. What's Ron's opinion on a pan- the Pantera? Pa- excuse me, Pantera reunion tour. Uh, will he be attending it if it comes to Canada? <sighs> So my first reaction was, oh, God, don't do this, yeah. right? That was my first reaction because, I mean, Dimebag and Vinny are both dead. And, like, without Dimebag and Vinny, like, Pantera's not Pantera. It's Phil and Rex, which is fine. But then you could just say Phil and Rex from Pantera hmm. are doing a tour, right? And mm-hmm. if they said, like, come see Phil Anselmo with Rex Brown, playing Pantera's classics. I would have been like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go see that. You know, and they would ha- probably get like an amazing guitar player to do, do his best job to play Dimebag stuff and, and get a, a drummer. I mean, there's lots of amazing drummers out there just played to their best ability, you know, that sort of thing. I would have been fine. And then when I saw that it was called Pantera, you know, Pantera, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. But then I saw who they had. <laughs> They got Zach Wild playing guitar. I mean, Zach Wild is, you know, the closest living thing to Dimebag in his own way. He's his own guy. He's Zach Wild. But like, he, you know, he's the only guy that fits 
to play Dimebag's music. And then they got, I can't remember his name because I wasn't a big giant fan of the band, but the drummer from Anthrax, which is one of the original four thrash metal gods from, you know, the 80s. Anthrax is, you know, in there with Metallica, Megadeth, and Exodus as the original four thrash metal bands. So they've got an amazing drummer who is like metal to the core and fucking loves Pantera music. And they've got Zach Wild playing guitar. And I'm like, I might go see that. So that's where I'm at. That was my emotional story of, of hearing the news and realizing what was going on. I actually thought that was great because I liked that just the way they named it made you consider telling them to fuck off. Because you were right. willing to go if they had worded it the way, Ron, not everyone knows your rules, Ron. I know. See, that's an exact right out of curb. <laughs> Right out of curb. I have all these rules and not everybody knows my rules. And I can't be so upset with people. I know I've given myself a speech. <laughs> That's me in a nutshell. Oh, that was great. That I'm was super great. upset with you because you don't know the rules. You know, what rules? My rules. My rules. <laughs> all right. We've got another one here. This is from Lucas. He's a longtime follower of the show. Big supporter. He reshares a lot of our stuff. And I yes, wanted to mention Lucas too. Lucas is awesome. You guys both know him. Uh, he works with a company called Prometheus.nl. They're European oh, distributors yeah, yeah. of yeah, mutant yeah, yeah, yeah. products. Yep. So yep. Prometheus does a lot of business with mutant. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, yeah, you guys can shop. If you're in Europe, check out Prometheus.nl. Uh, he says, a uh, question for the next show. Uh, what kind of decor... Uh, do you plan to put in your house, Dusty? Are you planning to incorporate that bodybuilding vibe into it? Or are you going to go more modern style? Definitely no bodybuilding vibe. I don't. <laughs> I've actually never brought a trophy home. No? Um, really? Mm-mm. Never. My mother has all of them. He's oh, never won okay. a show. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Hey, I almost got an 11th place trophy as a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, every every single thing is gone. I don't have any magazines, any anything. Um, I do have a painting um, that was done uh, of one of my photo shoots that I'll put in my cardio room. But that's like, that's it. I would never put anything like that in the house. Um, <laughs> because of where I live, it's going to be more that modern farmhouse style. So <laughs> not as modern as I would have done it solo. Um, but uh it's three to one in this house. I don't really like they, they're going to want a lot more function than I need. Like I don't actually sit on the couch very often, so it doesn't have to be comfortable. It has to look cool. <laughs> they will actually right. sit on it. So they will have to make it. it comfortable and look cool. But on a bright note, there's multiple couches because there's a loft for the kids and a downstairs for us. So when interesting, interesting point, I really yeah. like the look of minimalist furniture yes yeah. but i break it oh really oh i could see that and i wear sure. it out right yeah. i lay i said i drop down on the couch throw my feet up and you know i'm too, still 245 so i'm still heavy enough to like be really really hard on stuff oh for sure and i used to break stuff like all the time if it was like wimpy you know I know yeah, what you mean, you'd have to, you would definitely need to be cautious with that. But yeah, because for like my old furniture, I absolutely loved. I just sent you like a an inside glance there of the uh, what they did the other day, Scott. <clears throat> so oh, this is we've got now. Yeah, that was that was just yesterday. Just a little. They've got the uh, backsplash thrown up there. There's they've got the floor is all covered they're done so they're just kind of making sure you can uh see them but yeah it's it's got a you know modern feel but it's definitely going to be more cozy is the plan that's cool so yeah basic stuff I like that lucas came with that i i haven't seen him in forever i've known him for like a decade oh yeah from going over there yeah at least a decade all right. Well, I got one more here because I know we, we needed to do two programs. So I wanted to close this one out. with Yes. With a, good with call. A, with a comment. Andy Holden says, brilliant podcast as always, lad, lads. Uh, just uh, so you know, blowing someone off means something totally different here. 
in England. So it sounds wrong when you say it. So he's all right. So, so we, if we're blowing someone off. We're just blowing them. Is I, that what I think, that means? I think this, think that's what he's getting. At. I don't remember what we said, but we talked about like well, not just blowing them, blowing them off. It means you're really good at it. <laughs> well, if I was going right. to do finishing blowing, the I job, would be good at it. That's key. That's very- <laughs> I mean, if you get started, what's the difference? <laughs> that's funny. Oh God. <laughs> well, did you see that was that was asked of Jose on the last? Uh, he was on Bro Chat, I think it was, and uh, and the question was, uh, you're giving a guy a blowjob, and it's a five minute blowjob from start to finish. Are you doing the first four minutes and thirty seconds, or are you just finishing with the last thirty? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jose Jose goes five minutes. That's easy. And he was thinking that they meant that he was receiving the blowjob. <laughs> and, and they're like, Jose, no, you're giving the blowjob. And he goes, he goes, the hell I am. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not giving the blowjob. <laughs> oh man, I was crying. He he should be a permanent. I don't even watch because I don't like have time to watch a lot of uh, shows. But that little clip, I was like, "How is Jose not on there every time?" Yeah, like it's too good. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Too good. This is what and this is how much rivalry there is in podcasting. We talk about other podcasts on ours. Go People didn't used out. to do that. People didn't used to do that. You know, people used to say it was on another show. We won't mention. Oh, that's name. pathetic. We won't mention the name. That's so pathetic. Weak. Anyway, sorry. Now I'm not going to rant. I'm going to stop. <clears throat> Ron, there close us go. out, sir. We're done with this one. Okay. Remember, everybody, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. And there you go. go rent Scott's new uh, Airbnb as soon as it opens. Next Even year. though we didn't give him a lot of information because <laughs> I don't really know that department. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've never actually done that, Scott, but good question. We'll if, after I the, find some people that can actually help me, someone then, then will we'll actually it. answer <laughs> within our comment all the questions we have no idea about now. Yes. And, and if we didn't get to your questions, then definitely comment again. We do our best, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it, uh, it's a lot. You guys sent us a lot, too, so it was awesome. Which is awesome. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Remember, it's just bodybuilding.